Hey kids, Mr. Fry here, hope you're well. Out and about today on a really special bike. You'll know already that uh, today I'm riding the Honda CBR1000 RR-R Fireblade SP. What an absolute beast of a bike. Now I'm not uh, the sort of rider that this bike is uh, aimed at, so uh, you will have seen all the reviews if you're interested in this bike and what it can do on track, and there's no doubt this is a track bike for the road, or rather a track bike that you happen to be able to ride on the road as well. But uh, what I'm going to do today is have a take a look at it and see what's it like for somebody that really just rides on the road. Is it a bike that anyone can jump on and ride, or is it as intimidating as it seems on paper? Anyway, if you're interested in the Fireblade, stick around, stay tuned, I'll give you my first impressions review. So welcome to uh, lovely Great Missenden here in Buckinghamshire folks. I hope you can hear me okay. It's a little bit of a windy day today. I've had some issues with uh, with sound today, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Well, what a bike this is. Some bikes just make you feel good, don't they? And this is one of them because uh, it is a little bit intimidating when you get on these big litre sports bikes. I've ridden a few now. Last uh, ones I rode with the, uh, well, I think it was the Panigale V4 was the last full fat bike I rode of this nature. And then before that, the BMW S1000RR. So I've got something to compare them with, or to compare this with, I should say. But that was a little bit, a little while ago, so my memory's starting to fade. And I haven't ridden a Fireblade for maybe three years. I rode the previous incarnation of this bike, which was nice. But this one, I can already tell, is a step up again. This one came out brand new in 2020. As I say, it's the SP version. Uh, which is the one with all the fancy bits and pieces on. You can get a non-SP version. The non-SP bike is uh, 20 grand. This one is 23 and a half or thereabouts. And the main extra things you get on the SP are fancy semi-active Olin suspension, uh, top of the line Brembo Starlima brakes, uh, lithium ion battery and some other bits and pieces, but those are the main features. And if you are a track aficionado, a fan of track days, then you'll probably want to do the SP, go the SP route, because uh, those things really do make a difference on track. I'm not sure on road whether they make an awful lot of sense, but uh, I'm quite happy to be riding this particular bike with them. So let's do the review in my normal way then. Let's look at this as I would look at any other bike. So first off, comfort. What's it like? Well, of course, it's a sports bike. No sports bike is comfortable, and this is no exception. But it's not hideously uncomfortable. I'm uh, led forward in a sporty position, of course. My legs are at quite an acute angle, as you would imagine and the foot pegs are set quite far back. Uh, but I'm not leaning that far, it's not as uncomfortable as my Panigale for example. The, the bars feel a little bit wider than I'm used to on sports bikes. The seat is relatively hard but there's loads of room on here. I'm a sort of a medium sized guy, let's just pass this cyclist. And uh, slid forward on the seat, I'm sitting relatively upright. Uh, that would be properly upright. But yeah, I can sit forward and I'm, I'm relatively upright, or I can move back, there's acres of seats to move back on if you want to get down and do the tuck for if you're on the track. So for a medium sized guy like me, I'm 5 foot 8, it's pretty comfortable as sports bikes go. You might struggle if you're over 6 feet, but then that'll be the case on any sports bike. The seat itself is quite hard, but again, you don't buy sports bikes for comfort, do you? And on that vein, unlike things like the S1000RR, this very much is sports bike first, road bike very much secondary, so there's no things like heated grips or uh, cruise control on this bike. What it does have though is an amazing quick shifter, I'm just going to flip down, it's so smooth. Yeah, the quick shifter is brilliant on this, love it, and the sound as well, epic. 999.9cc inline four cylinder engine of course but we'll get onto the detailed specs when I do the walk around a bit later or it is worth telling you it does put out just about 215 brake horsepower so epically quick motorcycle this and in fact just one come onto a slightly straighter bit of road let's just give her a little squirt up here just to give you an impression of what this thing's like <laughs> oh wow, this bike is a ballistic missile, I tell you. It sounds like a Formula One car at full chat. I mean, like many sports bikes, there's not a lot low down. 
but when you wind her up, my goodness me, she picks up and flies. All right, we'll come back to a bit of the fun stuff again in a minute. Let's just finish off the practical stuff. Let's come down here. This is a really bumpy road. The reason I want to come down here is to see what the suspension is like. It may test the uh, image uh, capability on that camera as well, but the, the GoPro is a great stabilisation, but this is a real test down here because this camera is waggling about like nobody's business. A little bit of gravel around as well. But yeah, the suspension feels nice. It's got, as I say, the fancy Olin's semi-active stuff. You can see the stepper motor connections on the top of the yoke here. And it just feels lovely. So much adjustment on this bike. The electronics on this bike. I'm not normally a big fan of electronics on bikes. I tend to be a back to basics type of guy. But if you're going to have one of these bikes and you're going to go on track, then all the electronic help you can get is well worth having. And it's so almost infinitely adjustable on here. So it's got uh, power uh, control. It's got... Um, traction control, nine levels of traction control, anti-wheelie control, engine braking, uh, all these things you can you can dial in as you wish. So what I've done, I've just put it on a mode here where I can tailor them and I've got them all set in the middle setting for each of those at the moment and then I can play with it over time. But uh, so they're all middle, so power is on three, traction on five, anti-wheelie two, engine braking on two. Right, let's just go down this little twisty bit here. This is one of my favorite little, it's too short, but it's a nice little bit of road to try the bike on. It's quite dry on the road today, I'm glad to say. Wow, this thing just begs you to go fast. <laughs> this is an incredible machine. Talk about grin factor, I tell you. Acceleration never gets old, does it? But yeah, you really want this on the track because you can't even tickle its capabilities on the road. You'll be going at ridiculous speeds. The sound of this engine is just epic. I love four-cylinder bikes anyway. So smooth. Let's get down here. It's not frightening these cyclists too much. Well, to my ears, it sounds just like a Formula One car of old. Absolutely brilliant. Right, let's calm down again. Where was I? Yes, back to the practical items. You might have to do that camera up in a minute. It looks decidedly loose on there. <laughs> Good luck with that picture quality. Yeah, so back to the practical items. How about the mirrors? Well, reasonable view behind. Bit of a view of my elbows, to be honest. And they do vibrate a bit, but again, you don't buy a sports bike because you like the mirrors, do you? Alright, I'm getting concerned about how loose that camera looks. I'm going to just pull over here. I've got a car behind me, but I'm going to pull over. Just tighten that up as soon as I can. I think the car behind wants to play silly buggers, so uh, I'm going to let him go. Right, I'm going to pull over just up here in front of the checkers. Now, fall and fell of stopping here many times so I'm not going about I'm literally going to do this camera up and move on a bit there he goes nice and easy to find neutral on here I'll give it that much how's this looking right come on just that little squirt of power loosen that right off incredible Turn the hazards off. Stands easy to find. Nothing behind me. And on we go. And this is one of the things that is amazing about this bike. For a bike that's just so, so performant, it is so easy to ride. Even for a, a rider of limited skill like me. These modern day sports bikes really are something else. And really, although anyone can ride them, like I'm demonstrating here, you've either got to have extreme self-control, or really you have got to be a track enthusiast, because uh, it really is wasted on the road, because this thing comes alive. It's about 7,500 RPM, it suddenly goes like a rocket. And by that time, you're going pretty fast. Okay, so let's just check the brakes then. There's nothing behind us. Let's try the front brake. Wow, <laughs> incredible. Front brakes on here are again race spec Brembo Stylemas four pot calipers. 
amazing stopping power. Let's just try the rear. Actually, the rear's not bad either. It's a, a Brembo. I think it's a single pot, but again, I'll go through the spec in a minute when we do the walk around. Oh, the sound of that engine just never gets old. I absolutely love that. The controls on the bike, very easy to use actually. It's very intuitive. There's a, as I say, there's an awful lot going on electronically, but uh, I haven't even read the manual. And the guys from Honda said, oh, you will need to read the manual, so I probably will have to do that. But um, I found it pretty easy to navigate around. I'll show you the uh, TFT screen in a bit more detail when we stop. But it's controlled down here by this little arrangement, and sort of an up and down button and a, not a joystick because it only goes left and right, but it works very easily. It's one of the easier control systems I've come across. So the switch gear is quite nice on here. The only thing I would say is doing that old Honda thing again where it's got the horn and the indicator in the wrong spots. I don't know why they do that, but there we go. It's a Honda thing. The clutch on here, if you do want to use it, nice and light. But you don't have to use it much, of course, because you have got that quick shifter. The only thing I'm looking at here that I don't like in the cockpit, I think, a bit, is this uh, yoke. It's just a bit plain and boring. On a bike costing 23 and a half grand as the SP does, you think this might be a, a bit more, you know, nice machined piece. If it was a Panigale, for example, this would be all machined out and look really nice. But again, minor point, but uh, given you're looking at it all the time. Similarly, this, the brake reservoir, one of my pet hates, the plastic urine sample jar type. On a bike of this sort of spec, you'd think they could do something nicer than that. But I suppose the bike's not about luxury, it's about speed and handling. And they've certainly put the money into that. Wow. It feels like, the way to explain it is, uh, it feels like you've been put on a catapult and let go. <laughs> it just fires you out. It's brilliant. It's an addictive uh, sound and an addictive ride. I have to say, surprisingly comfortable for a sports bike. I'm used to riding my 899 Panigale, which is, I guess, quite uncomfortable. But this one you can move around on a lot. Bars feel a little bit wider to me. The handling is sublime on it. It just, you think where you want to go and it goes. And the suspension, which I haven't played with at all, as I say, is ultimately adjustable, but uh, it feels lovely. It's just not too, not too hard, not too soft, you know, in that old Goldilocks zone. Alrighty, so uh, shortly I shall be coming into uh, the lovely little uh, Chilton town of Wendover. I'll pull into the uh, station car park there. And I'll uh, show you around the bike and talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, here we are then, coming into... Uh, Wendover train station car park nice and empty so uh, let's find somewhere I can park her up in fact let's just uh, go around here and just see what the turning circle's like on here down the middle of this one around we go uh, pretty good pretty good I'm not putting my feet down but that's two turn that's two parking spaces and just to turn around in there pretty good turning circle on the bike right let's come over here in front of this bit of greenery Hopefully the sun might come out so we can get a nice shot of her. There we go, what's it like to find neutral? Dead easy to find neutral. And this bike is uh, keyless as you would imagine. I'm not a big fan of keyless stuff but there we go, it's keyless. But that's what I, I suppose keeps this clean looking here, even though I'm not a big fan of that yoke as I say. To turn this off, there's actually a little button down the side here uh, which in fact you twist to turn it off there you go and off she goes brilliant all right so side stand easy to find let me show you around this puppy here she is first out in 2020 uh, the Honda CBR 1000 RR-R Fireblade SP so that kind of strips off the tongue doesn't it regardless of what it's called what a beautiful looking bike it's a lovely machine it's got some little features on here that I like stuff like this a massive ram hair duct here they've cut out the front now 
gulping air straight into the uh, into the air box there, which is amazing. Uh, what else? Well, it's got some sports bikes these days. Wings are all the things, aren't they? Well, this has got wings, of course, but they are fed in here, which looks really nice. Just tucked in there. Uh, I think that just looks better than having wings poking out the side. And here we see the blingy suspension stuff, of which we'll talk about in a minute. Akrapovic can. Uh, both the SP and the non-SP have the uh, Akrapovic can. So uh, that's not a, it's not an ed, uh, optional extra, as it were. Uh, and the swing arm on here, I'm told, it's straight off the BSB bike as well. So again, all part of its racing DNA. All righty, a uh, few people standing around, which is always a bit embarrassing. But uh, let me get the other camera out, and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, here we go then. Hope you can see and hear me okay. Starting off then with the engine on here. I've already said it, I think 999.9 cc uh, inline four uh, engine. Absolute screamer, as I hope you heard. Sounds like a Formula One car. Uh, puts out 214.6 brake horsepower, would you believe, at 14,500 RPM. So like all these four-cylinder bikes, you have to really wind it up. There's no chance of doing anything like that on the road. Uh, very much for the track, that one. In terms of torque, 83 foot-pounds of torque at 12,500 RPM, or 113 Newton meters, if you prefer. Uh, let's go and have a look at those front brakes that I was uh, um, raving about. The uh, Stylemas on here, here we go, and these you get on the SP. If you get the non SP, then I think it's Nissin uh, brakes that you get. Let me just double check that. Uh, don't know, but I think that's the case. Anyway, on this bike, Brembo Stylemas, four pots as I say, uh, and they're on 330mm uh, discs. Awesome stopping pair. On the back, you've got the uh, little uh, Brembo, uh, looks like it's a two pot caliper on there, and that is a 220mm disc. And again, that works well. Uh, on the front, uh, you'll have seen the Olin suspension. This is the fancy stuff that they have on there. This is the MPX semi-active stuff, 43mm that uh, fork. And then when you have a look on the top, you can see the uh, where the stepper motors do their thing on here. Haven't played with that yet because, as I say, it just seems nice out of the box to me. But you know what would I know? This bike's way too good for me. On the rear, it's also got Olins. This is uh, underneath there. I don't know if you can see hiding under there. We got the TTX 36 uh, shock. If that means something to you. <laughs> Seat height, 831 millimetres, quite tall. Um, I can, I'm can sort of on the balls of my feet at 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch leg. But uh, the bike seems relatively narrow, so and it's certainly uh, not heavy, so you know it never feels ponderous when you come to a stop. Talking of the weight, 201.3 kilograms curb weight. Uh, so by my calculations, if you allow, say, 12.3 kilograms for fuel, uh, that'll make it 189 kilograms dry. So uh, a light bike, not super duper light, but pretty light given it's 1,000 cc. Uh, the tank, by the way, holds 16.1 litres. I imagine you'll be filling that up quite often. Uh, all sorts of electronics, as I said. Uh, full colour TFT, which we'll look at in a second a bit more. Uh, keyless, riding modes, wheelie control, engine braking control, nine level, um, torque control, multi-level ABS, six axis IMU, so it's all lean angle sensitive stuff. Launch control, lithium ion battery on the SP and a quick shifter and all that if you want it 23,499 or the non-SP with the slightly lesser uh, suspension and brakes will cost you 19,999 I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them but if you're on a track you probably could you can get this in this red which uh, looks lovely this sort of Honda HRC scheme that's what I'd have it in or you can get it in black as well if you want to be a bit more stealthy uh, alrighty so uh, that's the that's the spec of the bike I said we'd have a little closer look at that TFT so let me come around here and I'll just see if I can fire it up. I'll show you how it works. So the button on the side here to start her up is just there. Let me hit that. Should bring it to life. Here we go. And there's the TFT. And to control it, you use this button. This is the button arrangement here. Look, there's like a little side to side, not a joystick, but a lever, and then up and down buttons. And uh, if you look at the TFT here, when you see like two arrows, that means you hold the button down to the left. One arrow means you hold it down, or you just press it once rather. So if I hold that little this little knob here to the left you'll see it'll take me into the settings screen here we go and there we can see there's all sorts of stuff that you can get into and change there's absolutely so much in there that would be the subject of a big video in its own in its own right uh, let me just try clicking once to the right there we go and then you can go down on all this stuff display customize wonder what that does don't know got lots to play with there this is where you really do need to RTFM. Anyway, you get an idea. It's a nice clear screen though. There's different layouts of standards you can get. I quite like this one. Uh, there's even one that shows you the uh, the lean angle and stuff that you're on. Anyway, there we go then. Let's uh, kill that camera. That's uh, that's the spec of the bike. Uh, I think I need to jump her on and experience 
her a little bit more. What a lovely, lovely bit of kit, eh? So while I'm uh, just jumping on here, let me show you where my feet are on the deck here. So as I say, I'm five foot eight and my feet look are almost flat on both sides. Almost, not quite. All right, and then to bring this back to life then, so we just, uh, I think we just press the button on the side. There we go, that's brought it to life and then start. There we go, what a beast. Running around. Alrighty. So I must just say a huge, huge thank you to Honda UK for loaning me this bike. This, I'm thrilled to say, is my next long-term loan. I'm going to have this for the next couple of weeks or so. So I'm going to ride it as much as I possibly can and uh, get to know the bike and bring you a few more videos on it yet. So if you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned to the channel because I'll be uh, bringing you a few interim videos as usual, but also towards the end of the period that I've got the bike, I'll bring you, bringing you my in-depth living with review where I talk about all the things I've learned about the bike, not just the good things, but the bad things too. I'm determined to find some things about this bike that I don't like. Hello ladies. And I will bring you those in my long-term review as I say, so don't miss that. Okay, let's head down this way. So at the start of the video I said I was going to ride this as a normal road rider and that's what I've tried to do. As I say, I've got no particular skill on bikes. I've been riding now for about 10 years. I've been lucky doing this YouTube game because I've ridden all sorts of bikes. And really, to get the best out of this you do need to be on a track of course because that's what it's designed for. But if you are just a normal Joe, can you ride, if you've got loads of money, <laughs> more money than sense, <laughs> and you want to ride one of these on the road, could you do it? Well, yes, absolutely. I mean, even at slow speed, so here I am, 35 miles an hour, third gear, bike just behaves itself so nicely. But even in the short period of time that I've been riding, sports bikes have come on so, so much. 10 years ago, if you'd ridden a Ducati at this sort of speed in a high gear, it'd been riding like you're on a pneumatic drill. Whereas this just flat as you're riding, it just makes things so much easier. I guess partly because of that electronics sort of covering your back. But it's just a very, very easy bike to ride. So although, you know, I felt a little bit intimidated when I got on the bike when I first saw it and when I read the specs, 215 brake horsepower, that's a crazy amount of uh, power, isn't it, for a bike? No need to be intimidated by it, because you can if you want to. You could just ride it normally like this. There's absolutely no drama. It really is something special, this. And, and I guess the the big test of how good a bike is is how does it make you feel when you're riding it? Well, I've already forgotten that I'm on an uncomfortable sports bike. I can't, my bones have got, in the half an hour I've been riding it doing this review, my bones have got used to the position. I feel quite comfortable on here now. And I, I feel at one with the machine, I've got a big grin on my face. And I know there's nothing on the road that I can't just squirt by if I want to. But uh, that's where the uh, the problems lay, I guess. You've got to be sensible on here. Even though anybody could ride this, this is not a bike for beginners. And you've got to have extreme amounts of self-discipline and self-control. So that you don't ride around everywhere at license and possibly worse, losing speeds, if you see what I mean. But no, a lovely, lovely bike. I, uh, I like this. I like this a lot. Okay, so I can see some national speed limit signs coming up in a moment. So I'm going to get past this uh, bit of traffic when I get a chance. I'm going to ride the bike a little bit more. See what I can learn about it. And uh, don't forget to stay tuned for those other videos coming again soon. If you've not done so already, do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along next time. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Listen to Fly, but I do uh, bits and pieces in the garage about how to look after your bike. I do a monthly bike news feature. I do the odd live stream. I do trips and tours at home and abroad. Basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I'll try and cover it here on the Vista Flyer. It would be great to have you along. Alright, that's it for now then. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Vista Flyer. Cheerio. Oh, white vans. Why is there always a white van?